Hello and welcome to the first ever Haveling 100 online race briefing. We're bringing this to you guys from our studio here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'd like to officially welcome you. I'm the race director of the Haveling 100. My name is Jamil Curry, and we are so excited to have you guys this year. This is our largest race ever, and we are very, very excited. We've been busily planning everything for you guys to have a great weekend. The purpose of this video is to give you guys a few answers and visual representations of what to expect this week. Uh, this is mostly going to be concerning logistics of how to arrive, how to have a good experience with us concerning tent rentals, pacers, drop bags, cutoff times, and everything. And we encourage you to not only watch this video, share it with your crew, pacers, we provide a lot of information for them as well. And also, please feel free to comment below. We will be monitoring this video specifically and answering any follow-up questions you have that might be applicable to other runners and other viewers of this briefing. If you have a more specific personal question, please feel free to email our office manager, Jubilee, and we'll put her, her email up on the screen. That's jubilee at aravipaRunning.com and she'll be sure to answer those before you guys arrive this week. This year, we're really excited to announce that the Haveling 100 will be part of the Ultra Trail World Tour. If you don't know what that is, it's a collection of some of the most prestigious endurance running events around the world, but with the likes of Ultra Trail du Mont Blanc, the Marathon de Saab, Diagonal de Fou, Western States. So first thing I want to touch on is that all of you should have received, by the time you view this video, the runner email which uh, this is a paper version of this, so you can download this, um, but it's gonna have a lot of last minute information, very important key topics. I'm going to touch on a few of the most important ones right now uh, so that you guys can have a good experience arriving. So let's uh, get right into it. Uh, this race was started in 20, 2003 uh, by Jerry Kilgariff. She's a local runner here in the Phoenix area. And the number one thing, if you don't know about this race, is that number one, uh, this race is a little bit different than your standard 100 mile race. Uh, this race is really, it's a running party in the desert. So please be prepared to have a good time, let loose a little bit, uh, really enjoy yourselves because that's really what this race is all about. I was going to say that this is like not necessarily a PR course, but it is actually a pretty fast course. Uh, the only issue with that is that uh, this race also has a historically low finishing rate. We're talking 50% people. That means half of you viewing will start this race and not finish. We're hoping to change that this year. Uh, now I want to get just right into this right now. Uh, let's talk about the hardware, the belt buckles, because we all love that. So, um, and there's a little bit of a change this year, and I don't want you guys to freak out at the finish line. Uh, we want you to know what to expect. Uh, all of you that are entered in the 100 mile race, uh, this is the first year where we are not allowing uh, a drop down to the 100K buckle, 100K distance. Uh, if you start the 100 mile race, that is what you are going for on that day. You've stated your intention and you either finish that race or you don't finish that race. There's no gray area this year. So um, for those of you who finish the 100 mile distance under 30 hours, you'll be getting this uh, belt buckle. It's our 100 mile belt buckle. Uh, if you're under 24 hours, that's 24 hours from gun time, you get this larger sub-24 buckle. And both of these say on the back, Haveling 100, 100 miler, Halloween party. I did it in sub-24 hours. So uh, if you're in the 100K race, and that race now starts one hour after the 100 miler, uh, you'll be receiving our 100K buckle. And again, this one is not available for our 100 mile runners. Now you can still switch if you feel maybe race morning or the night before you're getting some, some cold feet, you can drop to the 100K. Just make sure that you let us know either at packet pickup or at the timing tent race morning and that you actually start at 7 a.m. with the other 100K runners. So um, feel free to do so. Uh, speaking about the two different races, uh, let's go over the bibs real quick. We have um, our bibs right here. And we've got the black numbers are for the 100 milers and the red is for the 100K. Now, some of you I know have switched last minute. Uh, that's fine. Your bib color might be a little different and that's okay. Now on the back, uh, we have our timing chip. 
uh, right here. And this is one that doesn't have foam on it. Uh, yours will have a piece of foam right on the back. And that just helps to protect the chip. Um, every time that you come through the start finish line at Havelina headquarters, we will record your time. Uh, and that will go up online uh, for people to view. We don't have a timing checkpoint out on the course uh, yet available this year. Uh, we plan to implement that next year, uh, but that's where things are at. Generally, the course follows the Pemberton Trail at McDowell Mountain Regional Park, but we will have these course markings. Uh, these yellow arrows with the Havelina logo and reflective tape that will light up at night. You can see that right here. We also mark all of our courses with this orange ribbon with black polka dots. It's very unique. So look out for this as you're making your way around the loop. Uh, we also will have reflective markers on some of these. They'll either be white or yellow. Um, both of them are from us. And if you see this blue and white checkerboard tape, this is what we mark trails we're not using for the race with. So if you see these, these are our wrong way markers. Um, let's talk about a few logistical things. Let's get those out of the way and then we can move on to some more fun stuff. Um, another thing I should mention is the participant guide. Uh, this is updated and available on the website. Uh, we're looking at about uh, 26 pages of information. This is something that would be great to print out and have with you, have your crew read over. Um, it's going to talk about a lot about what I'm talking about today. Um, make sure you check that out. Uh, let's talk parking passes, let's talk tent rentals, camping permits, and all of that, because I know that's probably the number one question we get leading up to the race and especially upon arrival. So we will have our camping area open at Havelina headquarters starting Friday morning at 7 a.m. Please do not arrive before then. Please don't arrive on Thursday. Uh, we won't be ready for you. So let's talk uh, parking permits. McDowell Mountain Regional Park charges $6 per day per vehicle. That's how they fund their operations. We've included a pass for all registered participants this year, just as we have the last few years. Uh, what that's going to look like is this right here. In the past, we've emailed these out ahead of time. This year, they're going to be available in two locations. Number one, at Packet Pickup, and that will be at the Wekopa Resort in Fountain Hills. It's our host hotel. That's where our expo is and also everything in terms of your bib numbers and your grace goodies, Friday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. You will have an opportunity to pick up your participant uh, parking pass there. It will have your name and your bib number pre-printed on it. When you arrive to the entry station at any time after that, um, show them this pass. They will tear half of it. Uh, they will keep half, and then you put the other half in your dashboard of your vehicle. And that will allow you to come and go as much as you want all weekend. Now, if you are arriving Friday for camping, and you can actually pick up this pass directly at the park, and that will be at the front entry station. If the front entry station happens to be closed or not open yet, uh, you can enter the park, and when they do open up, they will have these same exact pre-printed passes, one for every registered participant. You can go up there and pick up your pass at any point in time. Now, speaking of, now speaking of camping, we have our camping, tent rentals, everything that is happening at Havelina headquarters opening up Friday morning at 7 a.m. So we ask you, please don't arrive before then to start setting up. I know that you're gonna be anxious to get everything in order, but we really need that time to be fully prepared for all of you to arrive. So we ask that you arrive after that. Uh, if you have a vehicle camping pass or an RV camping pass that's pre-purchased, that is what these look like. So they have a little cutout here. Uh, you'll actually be able to hang it right in your rear view mirror of your vehicle. And that allows you to sleep in your vehicle, camp out of your vehicle or your RV uh, right in the Havelina headquarters parking lot. And that is now at the Four Peaks staging area. And that'll be right at the front of the park, right after you pass the park entry gate. We no longer need to drive the three miles into the Pemberton Trailhead. Uh, this is our first year of this new site and start finish venue. We're really excited about it. We have a lot more room to expand and to have increased opportunities for campers, for 
people in their vehicles uh, to spread out and set up more pop-up tents. And also we eliminate the shuttles that we've had to utilize the last few years of this event. So parking for those of you who are tent camping or arriving race morning is all going to be right across the street from the Four Peaks staging area in the competitive track parking lot. We've reserved that entire lot for the weekend for our race. You'll be able to park your vehicle over there. For those of you who, for those of you who are bringing your own tent and you've purchased a tent camping pass, uh, they will look like this. They'll be orange in color and you will actually have uh, a sticker that will have your name on it uh, and a tent camping permit for 2016. You'll be able to pick that up right on site at the Four Peaks staging area at Havelina headquarters. So go to the park for your uh, camping permit. For those of you who have pre-rented a tent rental, either a small tent, a large tent, we also have cot options, so you can have one or two cots within the large tents. Uh, those will be these four different tags. And so, for instance, they say right on there, like this purple one is a large tent plus two cots. Now, these will be pre-set up for you. Uh, the cots will be inside. The purple tag will be hanging. Um, it'll just be attached right on the zipper on the outside of that tent rental, uh, but it will be blank. So when you arrive, uh, check in with our, uh, with, our, with our staff right at that lot and you'll pick up a sticker that has your name pre-printed on it. You go and find whichever tent you want that has the appropriate color tag and it will say right on there. It will say, um, you know, like Jamil Curry, let's say large tent, two cots, and it will say purple tag. Um, so that way it's really simple. You know exactly what you got. Um, if you need to, to upgrade, let's say you got a large tent plus one cot and you want an extra cot, uh, depending on availability, if we have extra supplies, we can rent those additional to you right on site there. Um, just a general note uh, for all of tent rental upgrades, um, if you wanna still sign up for the race or purchase anything in our store uh, or from our food vendors, we do accept uh, credit cards as well as, as cash so you can feel free to bring your credit cards. Uh, the park also does uh, provide, take credit cards as well. Um, so one more note about the, um, the parking passes. If you have additional pacers or crew that's, that's coming in a second vehicle, they'll need to purchase their own pass. And those are $6 each per day and they're available right at the park. Okay. Uh, we've had a few questions about shuttles from the Wikopa Resort. Uh, there is not currently any sort of shuttle, so we highly recommend checking out the Havelina 100 Facebook group and coordinating a ride with another participant that does have a vehicle. Uh, it's just too far for them to be able to provide that uh, sort of service uh, for uh, people who are staying there this year. Let's talk restrooms. We have a number of pods of portable restrooms. Uh, if you want to see actually the site plan for Havelina headquarters, we uh, we'll have that up on the website and I guess, are we going to put it up on the screen? So we'll put it up on the screen right now so you guys can take a quick look at that. Uh, we have several pods of restrooms that are uh, located around headquarters, uh, kind of near different camping areas. Uh, as you'll notice, if you look at the site plan that's currently up on the screen, uh, you can see that the race course is an out and back through the parking lot. And so you will actually be running through the camping areas. We've designated some areas along the course where crews or runners can set up pop-up tents. So we envision kind of a row of these shade canopies, pop-up tents. You can feel free to bring these. You don't need a camping pass or permit for just a 10 by 10 pop-up, only for an actual camping unit or a camping tent. Oh, let's see. There are some areas where we would ask that you do not set up a pop-up tent, like a 10 by 10. We want to leave some areas open where different crews can come and go. Uh, you'd probably be welcome to set up a folding chair. We just don't want any tents set up there. It's kind of a, a more open area for that. Uh, let's talk about crews real quick. So crews are allowed to be at Havelina headquarters only. It's the only aid station. Uh, Rattlesnake Ranch, Coyote Camp, and Jackass are just for our volunteers and for the runners. Pacers, 
So Pacers may pick up their runner at Havelina headquarters only, and you may do so after three loops for the 100 mile runners or two loops for the 100K runners. The only caveat to that is if it's going to be dark on the third loop for uh, some of our runners that are pushing towards the cutoffs of the race, uh, you may join your runner uh, earlier than that heading out on loop three. Uh, we ask that all pacers do come and sign a pacer waiver, and that will be available near our timing tent. All right. All right, let's talk weather real quick. Uh, we're looking at a very typically hot Havilene 100 this year. I'm seeing a current forecast for Fountain Hills of uh, 92 degrees for this upcoming Saturday. Uh, it's looking like for a while there, we were going to be looking at a little bit cooler temperatures, but uh, I think you just need to plan for, uh, for hot, exposed temperatures out there. Uh, we have plenty of ice and water going out to our aid stations, so please use it. Please keep yourself cool out there. Uh, every year we respond to some heat exhaustion issues, especially for those of you coming from areas of the country that have already seen snow this year. Uh, we just can't emphasize enough to please take care of yourselves out there. Uh, one of the best things you can do is to actually keep your clothing wet. I know when I've run really hot races like Angeles Crest and Western States, uh, honestly the best thing I've done is to just you know, keep water on my hat, wear a hat first off, keep water in my bandana, uh, and, and keep ice in my pack. Um, a lot of times that water on you will act, act as an evaporative cooling effect uh, and it will keep you much cooler. Um, so with that being said, please carry enough water capacity with you as well. We have uh, between six and six and a half miles between a couple of our aid stations that are out on the course. Uh, and there's no water in between those. So that could take you potentially, you know, a couple hours in between aid stations. You do not want to end up out there with only one bottle. Uh, now with our change up in our course this year, we're looking at more like 20 mile loops. So that does lengthen the distance of both Rattlesnake and Coyote with our main aid station. So instead of being one and a half to two miles, those are now three and a half to four miles away. So they're a little more equidistant. Uh, which should be probably overall a good thing, but just keep in mind that that those are longer stretches now uh, without aid. Uh, even on loop one, even though you're going to be starting in the dark for you hundred mile runners, you know I highly recommend bringing you know two bottles of water on loop one. I would say a minimum of you know forty to fifty ounces of fluid for loop one, and then I would bump that up to at least seventy ounces if you have a hydration pack, a third bottle. Uh, I would highly recommend it, even if you just use one bottle to, you know, put some water on your neck uh, and on your hat. I would, I would say that's a great thing. Now, the other thing that happens at this race is once the sun sets, the temperature does drop dramatically, and it could drop by as much as 20 to 30 degrees. If you've been sweating all day and you're already dehydrated, that can really mess with your body. Uh, especially if you don't have a layer or anything. I would say heading out on loop three, you definitely want to have a layer, something that's a long sleeve, and definitely something in your drop bag at, out at Jackass. Um, it's definitely a good idea. We see every year runners with heat stroke in the day and then hypothermia at night. Uh, and oftentimes that's what really derails runners the most is that drop in temperature and they just get cold, they get the chills, they can't regulate their body temperature out there. So please keep that in mind. Um, can't say I didn't warn you. Um, let's see, let's talk drop bags real quick. Uh, I've got an example here. Uh, this is probably like a you know pretty standard drop bag size. Now we allow two drop bags on course. One is out at Jackass Aid Station and we need those before you start race morning. We'll have a designated truck or area where you can drop those in and they'll be transported out there after you start the race for 100 mile and 100K runners. There will also be a drop bag area at the main aid station at Havelina headquarters. Uh, we will have rows where you can place your own drop bag and that's where it'll be every loop and that will be located right next to our aid station so you can access that conveniently uh, every time uh, it'll just be right there for you. Now we ask you, please write your, your bib number, uh, your name, and like if it's going out to Jackass, please write it on there. Uh, it'll just help us to keep things straight. To help coordinate the 
drop bags coming back to headquarters from Jackass, from the remote aid station, we would ask that uh, you have an, we're going to have an area where you can put your drop bag once you are done with it on your final loop. So if you're coming around on loop three or five, depending on what race you're at, go ahead and pick your drop bag up from that area. Uh, go put it in the return to headquarters zone, and we will be bringing all those back every time a vehicle comes back from Jackass Aid Station uh, so that they do get there before 10 a.m. on Sunday, which is when that aid station will be closed down and back. Want to touch base on a couple of park and race rules that are important to know. Uh, littering is strictly prohibited. We do ask that all, all of us as runners uh, out enjoying beautiful McDowell Mountain Regional Park, please bring your trash with you to the next aid station. We will have plenty of trash receptacles for you and we will be hauling all of that trash and recyclables out. We have a couple of giant trash dumpsters. We have one for recycling, one for trash. So please do keep an eye out for those. We'll be recycling cardboard and plastics all weekend long. So please help us along with getting those into the right bins and helping to keep the desert clean. It'll really help us uh, to maintain a great relationship with the community and with the parks here that we are so fortunate to be able to use. Um, the park does allow pets uh, in general, but our race does not allow dogs at Havelina headquarters. Uh, or in the competitive track area. So this is something that has been a recent change at our race. There's just too much, too much going on. There's too many people out there for it to be a really safe environment uh, for both our four-legged friends and for uh, us as participants uh, in this event. So we ask that you know, if you are traveling with your pet or with your dog, uh, there are some great animal hotels, areas, kennels in the Fountain Hills and Scottsdale area uh, that we encourage you to check out. Um, the park itself does not allow glass bottles. So if you decide to bring uh, beer or something else of that nature, uh, ask that it is in a can uh, and that you help us by recycling those cans as well after you're done. Um, event rules. Uh, our cutoff times are enforced based upon gun time. Uh, not chip time. Even though we will uh, be also keeping track of your chip time, our, our cutoffs for our buckles, our awards, and also just uh, for leaving on your final loop, they're all calculated based upon that gun time. Uh, let's touch base real quick on the start of the race. Uh, we are having a record-setting year in terms of participant numbers. Uh, we expect with you know, 580 registered in the 100 mile, we'll probably see somewhere in the nature of 550 starters. Uh, that is a lot of runners, and a quarter mile after you start the race, you will be entering a more narrow single track section of trail. So we ask, number one, that you just be a little bit patient and know that this year there's going to be a bit of congestion. So if you are hoping to be competitive, uh, really wanting to be up at the front of that pack, please be sure to do so. Make your way to the front. Uh, if you're less concerned about that and pacing yourself like most of you should be, uh, that you can filter into the back. Uh, we don't anticipate that much of a wait time, but please do be aware that that first section of trail is a bit narrow. Um, and we just ask you just to be safe. You know, we are in the desert and there's cactus everywhere. Uh, we don't want you running into the desert to try and pass people in a panic. I promise you it'll be okay. Uh, and taking honestly that first loop a little bit slower, pacing yourself a little bit more, will really, I think, help your day uh, rather than hurt it. So just take a deep breath and, and enjoy uh, what the experience is. You know, make a couple new friends out there. Let's talk about trekking poles real quick. Um, generally, we don't like to allow trekking poles just with this many people on course. Uh, if you do have a special circumstance where you would like to use a pole maybe later on in the race, um, please just email uh, jubilee at aerovipaRunny.com uh, to obtain that permission from us uh, to go ahead and use those poles. Uh, this is a closed course, so we ask that you do follow the course markers out there uh, and that you don't cut you know, any portion of the course that uh, may be cuttable. Uh, let's talk race cutoff times. So with our new course this year, we've had to change those a little bit. If you don't know, um, I guess I should talk about the course real quick. So this year we moved to a five loop format for the 100 mile and a three loop format for the 100K. They're still going to be run washing machine style, which means you know, loop one's gonna be in a 
uh, in a clockwise direction, which maybe it's that way, maybe it's that way, I don't know, uh, depending on which way you're looking. So clockwise direction for loop one, and then you'll reverse that and go to reverse clockwise direction for loop two. Loop one is actually going to be a little bit longer. We're introducing the Escondido Trail. It's a, a great trail, and we'll just be using it on loop one. And then loop two through four, uh, or actually loop two through five, and loop two and three for the 100K will all be the exact same loop, and that's going to be a little bit under 20 miles per loop. Now, coming in from each loop, there's going to be a short out and back section through the parking lot. So we ask that you run all the way in through the timing area. You'll actually pass all of the camping zones and the aid station and your drop bags en route to the timing checkpoint. We need to make sure that you cross that timing checkpoint uh, you know, with your bib and that we get your time passing through each time. Uh, then you head right back out and you'll have a, another opportunity to hit up the aid station, your drop bag, uh, and your campsite again before you head out on your next loop. That split point is going to be at the edge of the parking lot as you enter and leave. That's going to be a really important area to make sure that you're going in the correct direction. We will have large signs there that let you know loop one is this way, loop two is this way, and so on and so forth, uh, so you don't get confused. Uh, sunrise and moonrise. So the sun will be rising at 6.43 a.m. We'll start to see civil twilight around 6.17 in the morning. That means you 100-mile runners starting at 6 are going to need a light for about that first half hour to 45 minutes out on the trail. And you feel free to, you know, you can put that in your drop bag out at Jackass Junction if you want uh, to pick up later or just carry it around. The 100K runners won't have to worry about that. Now, sunset is going to be 5.39 p.m. with civil twilight ending at 6.03 p.m. So make sure that you guys pick up that light again, probably heading out on either loop three or four, depending on uh, where you're at in the race. We do not have a full moon this year. In fact, we have almost a new moon, so it's going to be completely dark at night out there. You're definitely going to need a light this year. All right, let's talk amenities out at Havelina headquarters for crew and for campers on Friday. Freak Brothers Pizza will be back out with their wood-fired pizza oven. They'll be selling starting at 3 p.m. on Friday all the way through the Trail Running Film Festival, which is going to be happening on site at headquarters that night starting at 6 p.m. They will also be open the next morning at 9 a.m. through the duration of the race. Uh, they do accept cash and credit cards. They will also be selling coffee, a few other drinks out there as well. Um, other vendors, we have Foxy Fruit Bowls will be out uh, for race day uh, for crews to also purchase some smoothies and some other uh, acai fruit bowls. Gives you guys a nice healthy option. There will also be a kettle corn vendor as well as a Italian ice cart. Uh, if you're looking for some Havelina 100 merchandise, uh, such as this hoodie, hats, all kinds of other things, we will have our store open at the Expo on Friday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Weekopa Resort, as well as back open on race day through the duration of the race. Probably be closed for a couple hours there in the middle of the night, uh, but back open again. Uh, we'll be having not only Havelina 100 merchandise, uh, some Aravipa, Run Steep, uh, and also some shirts and product from uh, the title sponsor of our race this year, which is Mountain Outpost. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out that channel, uh, it's a YouTube channel. It's a show that we have going on. Uh, we do some wacky, crazy challenges, all that have to do with running. Uh, all I have to say is, please pick up your drop bags. I do not want to do another mystery drop bag challenge this year, so uh, please help me out with that if you can. Uh, I run local specialty running store here in Phoenix will also be set up at our expo uh, with a few essentials that you might have forgotten. Uh, we do plan on having our online results on our ultracast and that will be linked up on our website. So participants, uh, runners, crews, and those of you having family and friends back home, will be able to tune in and see uh, your lap split times and that will just be recorded at Havelina headquarters with your bib when you cross that line. If you decide to end your run early and need to drop from the race, we please ask that you notify 
our timing tent, which is right adjacent to our start finish line. We really need to know if you're no longer running in the race so we can keep tabs and accountability on everyone so that we make sure everyone's safe. If you are at a remote aid station and, to and decide to withdraw from the event, we need you to notify one of our amateur radio operators. They will be wearing most likely a yellow shirt and they're the ones that need to be notified. They will be communicating that information back to us at the main headquarters. Uh, and then we will work on coordinating to get you out of that aid station. Our medical team is hosted by Endurance Care again this year. They will be headquartered out of Havelina headquarters. Uh, you will see their first aid tent right near the transition zone. If you guys have any issues when you're out on course, if you have a blister, if you have feeling like you're sick, some symptoms of dehydration or hypothermia, please go and see them. They are very, very attentive and they have lots of experience working at these types of events and they're really, really excited to help you guys out. Um, you know, try and get after those little issues and little problems early. It'll help uh, prevent those issues from getting worse out on course. Uh, we don't have any mandatory weight checks at this race, uh, but they will have a scale at the medical tent if you're curious to know where you're at with your hydration, or with anything else going on there. Now with this race being a Halloween party, we definitely encourage you guys to wear costumes. We will once again be having a best male and best female costume award. We'll be keeping an eye out for you guys as you come through each loop. I do wanna say a quick word about our Jackass Junction aid station. We get a couple of emails every year and it's a little bit wild out there. I just wanna warn you guys ahead of time. This is not your normal typical aid station. Our aid station captain, Justin Ludic, is a little bit loud, a little bit crazy, so I want you all to expect that and hopefully look forward to it. If you are maybe not in the party mood when you come through there on that loop, uh, we recommend going directly to the white aid station tent. There is a lot of really great people out there to take care of you, get you refueled, rehydrated, and back out on your way. Uh, you'll notice Justin's zone, the disco zone, uh, across the way. If you want to let loose a little bit and, and party a little bit more, feel free to go head over there. Um, but again, we're trying to uh, you know, keep the fun while still taking care of you guys out there. Uh, we will be having a charity beer garden again this year, and that's going to be sponsored by Hus Brewing, with proceeds going to Narawa's De Rara Murray. Race photography this year will be coordinated by Sweet M Images. They'll be out several locations on course. You guys will be able to purchase photos from them after the race. I'd like to give a shout out to all of our race sponsors, including Mountain Outpost, Run Steep Get High, Squirrels Nut Butter, Moss Karima, Carbo Pro, Mobin Sleeves, Hus Brewing, and Freak Brothers Pizza. Uh, once again, thank you guys for coming out this year. We are so excited to have you all come into town. If you guys do, again, have any questions following up this briefing, please comment below. We will be commenting directly back to you. Uh, and again, if you have more specific questions, please feel free to email us as well. If not, we'll see you all on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Please be safe traveling, and we are so excited to have you out there.